Hello everyone. I've been getting some requests from people to show a few more of the in-depth uh, parts of world creation in WorldKit. And I've also been getting some requests to show uh, how world composition works for Unreal Engine 4. So I put together this video today to show those things and uh, I hope you enjoy. So I put together uh, this, just this quick little uh, world here in Photoshop. It took about 10 minutes just to uh, sketch out some outlines and some biome areas that I'm going to use. So I'm going to take it into uh, WorldKit here and create a new project. First thing I'm doing is loading up a uh, file to use for the regions. Um, so this file you can see in Photoshop here it just looks like this. It's just uh, two colors, green on black, no anti-aliasing. Um, and I'm going to load that into the regions file here, turn the regions file on, and then I'm going to set the detail on the coast and generate. I'm going to dial down the detail on the coast just a little bit. And now I'm going to go and import the biomes file. So I'm going to select the other file. Um, this one, uh, I've, I've used the sort of the mountain biome as the main color. And then I've, I've got like foothills and plateaus and things layered on top of that. So I'm uh, going to generate here. And there we go. Need to go through and uh, select the uh, correct biome type for each of the colors. So you'll see the green color here is the foothills. So I'm going to assign that to foothills. The uh, light blue color here is uh, plateaus. So I'm going to assign that to plateaus. Um, the pink color is mountains. Uh, rolling hills are good. And then I'm just going to add one extra biome here for coastal mountains um, because I kind of want um, more gentle sloping mountains towards the coastline around the outside of the map. So I'm going to do some manual edits on the biomes and I'm just going to uh, change some of the mountains around the edges to coastal mountains. That looks pretty good. I'm going to add just a few uh, planes to give some flatter areas near the river mouths um, and a little valley in the middle. Well, it looks pretty good. I'm going to turn off edit mode here and um, generate the mesh. And there we go. So this is without um, penning in any specific rivers or mountain ridges or anything like that. Um, this is a bit more uh, area than I want. So I'm going to generate it at a slightly smaller detail scale here to make it a bit more suitable for the game world that I'm going for. And there it is. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now I'm going to go over and um, in a moment here I'm going to um, bring up the image that I've drawn in Photoshop just to get a guide for where all of my rivers and uh, mountain ridges and stuff should go. So here's my initial drawing in Photoshop and I'm just going to use it as a reference for drawing in some of the uh, river splines. And um, I'm going to speed up this part of the video because it gets a little bit uh, repetitive just drawing lines out and uh, once you've seen one or two there's really no reason to uh, sit and watch me draw out all of these lines. I went a little nuts with the number of uh, rivers in my reference here. Uh, 
Then what I'm going to do is, uh, I haven't drawn them on the reference here, but I have an idea of where I would like some steeper mountain ridges to go. So I'm just going to draw in those mountain ridges as well and generate, and there we go. So uh, now the world is looking a little bit closer to my reference because I have everything exactly where I want it. It's uh, pretty much exactly how I had designed it in Photoshop. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It's going to make a good example here for uh, world composition. So I'm going to start the export process. Now, um, for world composition, the export process is exactly the same as, as exporting the height map as you normally would. So I'm just going to go and select only the height map and export here. Um, one thing to note is I'm not going to export at 8192. I'm going to export here at 8129. Um, and that is important for uh, Unreal Engine and uh, how it imports terrain using world composition. I won't go into the technical details, um, but if you look at the technical documentation for landscapes in Unreal Engine, they have a really good explanation of why it needs to be that way. It takes a little bit longer to export because I'm exporting at a much larger size than I'm generally using in the uh, in the application. So here's my exported height map and uh, there's what it looks like in Photoshop. It's 16-bit uh, um, so you don't lose any of the nice subtle terrain details. Um, so yeah, that's the first step in the process. Alright, so now we're going to head uh, back over to WorldKit and uh, proceed with the next step in the process here. So the first thing is to go and uh, select the input file for tile generation, which is the file we just had open in Photoshop that we just exported. So I paused the video here just to talk a little bit about why we did tile generation as a, a two-step process. And there's a couple reasons for it. Uh, the first reason is um, sometimes we want to do some touch-up in Photoshop in between uh, the previous step and this step. Uh, for example, I often apply a two-pixel Gaussian blur to the height map just to smooth out a few of the rough edges and, and uh, make things look a little bit more weathered. We also wanted to leave the option open for people working on more photoreal or cinematic projects to uh, use other tools like World Machine or World Creator to put some of the high quality um, erosion effects or, or the things that those, uh, those particular products do well onto their terrain before heading over to Engine. And this way WorldKit can play well with other software and leave the end user the freedom to do what they want. So I'm going to go select the output location for the tiles give them a base name here, and then we're going to select the tile size. So the, the sizes that work are 1017, 505, uh, 253, and uh, 127. And I'm not going to go into the technical reasons for that here. Uh, you can look that up in the uh, world composition or, or landscape technical documents on Unreal Engine, and it's, it's explained in a lot of detail there. For this project, we use 1017 or sorry, yes, 1017, and that's going to work well for this project. So um, here are all of the output tiles that WorldKit just created, and I'm going to go ahead and shut down WorldKit here. Well, here we are in Unreal Engine. You're going to want to go to Levels and Import Tiled Landscape and uh, select the tiles to import. You actually need to do a multi-select on the tiles in order to bring them in. Um, so you can just shift, shift click on those. 
Uh, normally this is where you could also bring in your uh, additive and uh, alpha masks for your terrain layers. Um, I haven't done that in this video. Uh, WorldKit supports uh, the creation of tiled uh, additive and alpha maps with multiple layers, but I opted not to to show that at this time because uh, we haven't finished working on the way to generate those uh, layers directly from within WorldKit. Uh, what we did in RoboGenesis was we um, we composited our masks. Uh, using the exports from WorldKit uh, in Photoshop. Then we tiled them using WorldKit and uh, brought them directly into the engine at the same time that we imported the height map. And the compositing process for generating the masks generally consists of using the uh, height map, the soil density map, the slope angle map, the coastal border map, the flow map, and a few others um, using multiply screen and levels inside Photoshop. But I opted not to show that in this video because we're working on a much faster way to do that inside WorldKit itself. For the purposes of this video, I'll show the terrain with an auto texture. Uh, that you can uh, get on the Unreal Engine Marketplace instead. So I cut the video and redid a portion of it here because I realized I forgot to mention a couple things uh, in the previous step and actually the, the import wasn't correct because I had the uh, tiles flipped and I had the incorrect uh, height resolution. So I, I redid it here and corrected those issues. So the first thing to mention is that you'll need to go under world settings and check this box here that says uh, enable uh, world composition. And then I'm going to go and do the process again where we uh, import the tiles. But this checkbox here that uh, flips the Y coordinates, that needs to be unchecked in order for the tiles to come in for, in the right order from WorldKit. And the other thing that I forgot to mention earlier is that the Z scale value of the imported terrain will also need to be adjusted. Um, WorldKit tries to make the best use of the 16-bit precision that it can, so it uh, normalizes the output so that the height uses the full range from 0 to approximately uh, 65,000. Um, so in, in the case of this train, it turned out that uh, approximately 50% worked pretty well. And the final thing that I forgot to mention before was that um, the, the world that I ended up tiling and bringing in has a very slight blur applied to it, uh, approximately a 1.8 pixel Gaussian blur just to take the sharp edges off of uh, some of the features. So um, I, I actually didn't import the um, height map that we exported earlier directly. There was some some slight change to it in Photoshop. So uh, re-import here. Um, I have my flip Y unchecked, my 50% scale. I sped up the import here because it takes a little bit of time for Unreal Engine to do that. Um, Sometimes when you import terrain, if you're, you're re-importing and you've already done it, you need to open a different map and then come back to your, um, your persistent level in order to have all of the tiles show up in your level list here. So I'm loading all the levels and then I go into the uh, world composition view and I'm just going to move the world to the, the center. And there we go. And there we have our world imported into Unreal Engine um, using just the base uh, third person level as an example. And um, yeah, we can just drop in, run around. Here's uh, what it looks like.
so you can get a good view of uh, sort of what the features will look like in engine and uh, what your skyline will look like and uh, I'm gonna go out and I'm going to drop a uh, auto texture on here and some procedural foliage just to give a view of what some of that stuff could look like um, but this is basically it. Uh, zooming out here while it's running an engine you can see that only one tile is loaded and there when I stop the game you can see the the rest of the tiles come in and that's pretty much it. So we have a world using world composition imported into Unreal Engine. So here I've added a, an auto texture that I got off the marketplace uh, that also comes with some uh, foliage and I added a water plane in so this will give you a better idea of uh, what the landscape might look like with some actual texture and colors applied to it. And I'll just uh, run around here and take a look at a few different vistas. And some astute UE4 users might look at this and say, hey, you shouldn't really have your procedural generators in the persistent level and a single one for the whole map. You should really break those up and put them into uh, the streaming levels. And you'd be absolutely correct. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes, so I could get something uh, uh, quick and easy in here to show. But um, you definitely want to spend a little bit more time and, and break up those uh, procedural generators. And you would probably also not want to use a streaming distance of uh, 800,000, depending on your world size and, and how you have it set up. But for demo purposes, I just went ahead and did that to keep things uh, quick and easy here. I think this is the highest mountain in the world here, so from up here you can get a pretty good view of what everything looks like in the surrounding. And so there you have it. That's pretty much the complete uh, creation process for WorldKit, uh, including uh, custom regions, custom biomes, world composition, import into Unreal Engine 4. And uh, from this you can see that in you know uh, less than an hour you can really have something almost exactly the way you have designed it with a quick sketch in Photoshop in engine uh, roughly textured with sort of a prototype texture and and it's a really fast way to um, try things out and and see what your world is going to look like in engine quickly without investing hours and hours of upfront effort so I hope you found this video useful. Um, sorry for you know some of my missteps there. It's it's difficult to make a process this long in one take without making a few mistakes along the way. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great day.